Good morning, everyone. I'm Michelle. We're here on Hukalo's Saturday webinar. Thank you for joining us. We are with Jim Charles. Um, we have a couple of announcements. Uh, Jim and Max will be teaching Galactic Reiki class November 25th and 6th. Uh, you can sign up for it. The details are on hukalo.org. And we, Hukalo is also sponsoring a workshop um, February 1st through 6th in Sedona, Arizona. Um, with a myriad of different modalities of teaching and exciting um, spiritual practices and other. <laughs> um, it's going to be a really neat, amazing energy kind of time. And the details of that are also on hukalo.org. And there's some space still available. And the price is great. So um, I'd like to introduce Jim Charles. This morning. Good morning, Jim. Good morning. I just want you to introduce the people in your room and then I'll do mine. Okay, today we have Alex, Amanda, Christine, Iwa, Max, JD, Peter, Silesh, Sheer, and myself. Excellent. And, and in my room here, I have Angela and Barbara and Will. And Jamie and Ray and Mark's Mark here. is somewhere. Mark Zinzo. Mark is Mark Zinzo is say, staying Hi, for a little while. He's from Indiana. He used to be in Rochester, but now he has moved away and he's coming back to visit. So. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, right. Who is? Is there anyone that you would like to? Here today, I know that Elijah is coming. We heard a few requests, for, uh, such as Keck and Isha. Is it Isha? And um, a Aisha. Of others. Aisha. 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 Grendel. Grendel. <laughs> you have someone to, uh, Maybe Fandorian. And Toth. Toth. Okay. Exactly. Toth, who is the guardian of the Akashic Records, that's what I gathered. And Gaia too. Gaia, someone asked for Gaia. Mm. Kek, the Lord of Rebuild and Destruction, the Egyptian God. Yes, I mentioned that one, Kek, yes. Um, he's an interesting character. We'll see how we, if he comes through. All right. Before I start, I want to ask the people in the room, are you warm enough? Mm -hmm. Is everybody comfortable? And if you want water, it's in the refrigerator. And if you want coffee, it's over there. So it's in the kitchen. All righty then. Blessings. I will take requests for blessings. Yeah, blessings. That'll be a blessing. Blessings, anyone? Yeah. Will will do one. Anybody else? Nobody else out there. Nobody else? I would love to do one. JD. Okay, very good. Excellent. I, I heard you talking there, JD. <laughs> All right. Uh, you, who do you want to start? They're, they're already talking for me, so. Okay. I might as well very. Go. Will will start, and then we'll go to JD. And is if Michelle, is there anybody else in the room there? Okay, we can start with those two blessings then. He can't watch Chai, Tatana, a Chichikuhu, Tatokosa, E. Shiranawara Tarasi, a Chikawa, Takaskana, a Chichikaya, Shishaya, Sasana, Ahu, Tatashi, Shishika, Sawa, Sasano, Cho, Chichikawa, Hasasia, Tatawara Naria, Taskaskaya. Ushashia, Kahawa Tanana Hasasia, Chichishikawa Nara Sihia, Awa Chichahawa Tahoa Kaha, Ishishakawa Ashashashinia, Tukuhuta Danaya, Sasasia, Shisha, Waya, Awa Kakasana, Ichichakahoa, Titikiacha, Rishikawaya, Nisinana, Ukohuata. Thank you. 
Thank you, Lord, for brightening this day and for energizing the time that we are together. Let this be a time when things have great meaning and great energy, great understanding, and move everyone forward in a way that is uh, acceptable and agreeable in their spirit. Thank you, Lord, for this time to share with one another the energy of the ascension, the energy of rising together, the energy of being a heart in one way connected and in many ways connecting all. We pray now that you will uh, take this time and make the best use of it and make us all close as one in our spirits and thoughts. Okay, JD. JD, would you like to offer a blessing? Yes, I will go. Nayakasa, Yayakasa, Naya, Hayakusukushuakata, Nayawasa Kishi Arwana, he Ayokosukushuakati. Naya wasa kishia ruana ka hiya wasa iya naya taya ha. Hayo kushu rakasa kata hiya kusunu akasa ya wani. Shaya kusutu huara kia sana ya kasiya taya kasiya na wa. Hayo sushu kushu ara kia wana ya taki. Hai wasa ki shiaru wa na iya soyu wa. Nota kata ya ki sana ya wiya wa. Hai uyu wa kasaya hiya ta. Naya na wiya siya kashana. Hai anu siya kashana. Namaste. Wonderful. Accept the light into your being, into every part of it, and believe and let the light heal you and fill you and make you different in a greater and much more joyful way than you've ever been before. Let the light be part of your joy and your understanding for the future. Let it brighten your brain. Let it brighten your soul. Let it brighten your third eye and all the things that around it. Let it become your voice. Let it... When you speak, let light come forth inside the words that you speak so that others can feel the energy of light, love, and understanding as it is being presented to them in a way that is non judgmental and full of acceptance. Very good. Excellent. All right, today I know that Elijah will come first. And once again, I hope, I know that he's going to want to be short, but whenever Elijah comes, we have usually a thousand questions. And that's okay if there's going to be a lot of questions, there is. But uh, I know he's coming at least for a very short visit right now. So I will bring him and then we'll see who else comes after him. Bring you a soapbox. Yes. <laughs> so he said he's uh, coming with his soapbox. So he does always when he comes, he has a message. <laughs> One moment, please. Greetings, I am Elijah. I had one message that I wanted to bring to you, but I'm going to start with something else right now because it has come to my attention just recently. There are a lot out of uh, a lot of people out there and a lot of spirits and even uh, uh, entities that you are not aware of experiencing all the different energies that are coming to the earth 
from the sun, from the solar system, the center of the galaxy, and Mother Earth herself. And they are bringing um, many negative feelings. But try to remember that these are only temporary and give thanks to God that they will not be permanent because they are causing a lot of havoc within a lot of people. So please remember they are only temporary and I am praying for you that this time will move quickly and that you will come out of this time of uh, feeling much better. And many people are already starting to feel some relief, but there are those that are still in emergency mode and still feeling a great deal of uh, tension and and disruption especially from the sun because you went through a period where the sun well it is still very disruptive on the surface because it released a great uh, uh coronal mass ejection not long ago just a couple weeks or a few weeks ago and so the this area of the sun is facing you and is greatly disturbed and that can affect humanity in many ways also it affects some of your connections with your skype and with your telephones if you'll find your, your telephones are acting a little strange it may be because of different things with uh sun energy but that wasn't my main message my main message is about forgiveness i'm finding that a lot of people are not understanding what forgiveness really is all about they say they forgive but then they bring up the subject that was supposed to be forgiven many times later they say oh yes i forgave you for that but as soon as that person does something wrong they bring that thing that they are supposed to have forgiven up again that's not forgiveness Forgiveness is when you actually do forgive and say, I love you, and I for, I'm going to try to forget that incident. If you do not do that again to me, or if you do not do that again to whoever, then it should be forgotten and forgiven, because every human makes mistakes. I'm sure that you are human, and I'm sure that you have made mistakes. But remember this, whenever you are forgiving someone, it must come from a place of love and acceptance. It cannot be like this. I forgive you. Oh, all right. I, I forgive you. That is not sincere. You have had forgiving people forgive you that weren't sincere, and I know you felt the insincerity, but yet you accepted it because they said it. They need to revisit that because it is not fully taken care of. And if you have unforgiveness for someone and you have very much trouble forgiving them, you must revisit that and meditate on that and bring out the reasons why it is so hard to forgive. And you may find, and in many cases this is true, the reason why you cannot forgive someone else for this particular thing is because you have not forgiven yourself for something very similar. You know how hard it is to forgive yourself. Some people just cannot do it. Some people have a hard time even thinking about the concept of saying, I forgive myself because they do not think it's necessary or they do not think it is part of what needs to be done. But let me tell you, it is important. Let me step back a couple steps. First of all, when you are forgiving someone else, you must do it out of love and acceptance and be honestly willing to forget it. Now, if this person has done this same thing over and over and over again, they are not sorry. If they said that they were sorry and continue to do the same thing over and over again, 
that is not being sorry. That is only saying that they are sorry because they had no intentions or if they did have intentions, they were very weak when they said that they were not do it again. And in fact, many times when people say they are sorry, they don't say, I'm not going to do that ever again. Some people do, and I love that because that shows a commitment to being better. That shows a commitment to being truly sorry. But remember, if someone does something over and over again, you may forgive them for it, but they need to truly be sorry for it for to be truly go away. Now, you may be all right in your soul for forgiving them. You may be true about forgiving them over and over again because did not Christ say, forgive them 49 times 49 or something of that nature? Meaning that no matter what they've done over and over again, you should forgive them if they ask forgiveness for it. And you should truly mean that you forgive them even though they do it over again. Now, some of you in this day and age say, how much are we supposed to take of this? With unconditional love, think about this. What is unconditional love? It is, is it the kind of love that will forgive 10 times, but not the 11th? Is it the kind of love that will say you're my friend and then turn you away? Is it the kind of love that sees great need in the world and ignores it? Is it the kind of love that whenever you feel that you cannot give any more, you actually stop? This is the kind of world where you're going to find that unconditional love is going to push you to your ultimate place where you know that love is true within yourself. Because there are those people out there that will will pull at that and test your patience and test all that is within you. Test your virtue and test your understanding of what love, and as soon as you break, they will point their finger at you and you are no longer their example. You are no longer someone that they respect up here, but you have come down in their thought processes. Now you're gonna say, oh no, it's just the other way around. When people, when you don't stand up for what you believe and when you don't shut them down, that's when they don't respect you. Sometimes that's true. What kind of person is that? What kind of person are you when you are standing up for yourself? Or what kind of person are you when you're showing unconditional love? How do you show it? Is it truly a good example? Is it truly what you want them to see? I could preach about this for hours. There are so many angles and so many thought processes that are based about around forgiveness in this day and age that people have not connected to because it's been so watered down. Forgiveness has been so watered down, it actually means very little to some people, and people don't even do it anymore. You'll ne- there are those people that never say, I am sorry that never ever look twice at somebody and think that they've done anything wrong because it's all about me. It's all about what I need and I was taught that way. It's what I want. I was taught that I have to get what I want. Heck with you. Heck with anybody else except for maybe somebody that I really care about or my immediate family or or whoever is the close-knit part of my life, all right, I might care about them, but heck with everybody else. 
This is the day and age, my friends, that you must be an example of truth and love. And that brings me to the last point. You cannot be that example of truth and love if you yourself are guilty. If you yourself do not like yourself or love yourself or find yourself secondary. It is true. You must love yourself in order to be able to love other people. You cannot love someone truly if you do not love yourself. But does that mean being selfish? Does that mean being everything for me? No, a true love for yourself is a spiritual understanding between you and God that you are in a good place with one another and that you are feeling his love because that is your creation love. The love of the creator, the love that he gave you as the person that he wants you to be and that makes you beautiful, worthy of love and worthy to give love and a good example to the world. Not that you're going out there saying, me, 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 I love myself. But you're saying, I love you here. Take something of me. Because when you and God together are working together, you emit love. You give off love like the sun gives off rays of sunshine. You are not accepting negativity and you are not bringing things in me, 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 but you are being the example of putting out love. And you will be brought into confidences and you will be brought into thought processes that need unconditional love. Now, I know there's going to be questions because some people do not understand unconditional love. They know so many people that are living in selfish love. And they have been, the, they have been brought up in third dimension with this kind of you have to get what you want kind of attitude. You have to take care of yourself. That's true. But you don't have to take care of yourself by hurting others and stepping on them and trampling over them. You have to take care of yourself by meeting the needs of your life, but also looking around to see how you can make your world better. That's your responsibility. You were never taught that. At least mo many of you were not. So if there are any questions, please let me know. Uh, Brooke has a question. Brooke. Hi. Greetings. Greetings. Um, so my question is, um, when I do things from a place of unconditional love, um, not all the time, but some of the time, I tend to accidentally ignore my own needs in favor of the needs of others and end up inadvertently hurting myself. And I'm wondering if there is a way to look at unconditional love that also includes the self that I am not seeing when I practice it. Correct. Let me tell you something. That's not necessarily unconditional love. That's out of control love because you need to control yourself when you're giving to others. You cannot leave yourself vacant. You cannot leave yourself exposed because you are important and God is important. You must approach these kinds of situations with God. Many people try to do unconditional love on their own and that's a problem. And I know you say, well, I have brought God into that, but at some point, you forget about it. Bring him in 
so that he may be working in you as you are working outside the body, outside the thought process of that. You are a good person. You have great love to give, and you actually give to your almost empty. But that's why you need God to help you with it, because he keeps you full. He keeps you fueled, if you will, with the love that you need to give. And he also knows your limitations. And he says, whoa, this is time. It's time to uh, stop here and say, look, I, have, I am so happy I've been able to give this time to you. And I know you need more, but I need to regroup. I need to re-strengthen. I need to come back a little bit. I have not forgotten you, and I will return. But for right now, I need a break. That is not wrong. That is taking care of yourself in an unconditional loving way because you will return if necessary to that situation and not be empty and not hurt yourself. You see, if you hurt yourself, you're actually hurting whoever you're helping because they will see that. They will see, but they will love that you were a great example. No, no question. But they will all, all also feel bad that they have taken too much. At least some of them will. Others will not recognize it. But you will have to. Yeah. You are so giving. And you have a great deal of love to give. But keep God flowing and filling. Because otherwise you do hurt yourself. Yeah, it's like um, like a getting emptied out like an old well. You're like, I have nothing left. Oh, exactly. No. And that's why God is there to regulate the situation and to keep you um, oiled in some ways that you're smoothly running. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. And I know that you understood that completely. I did. Yes. Thank you. Anyone else? Is there anyone in the room that has a question for Elijah? Is there anyone here? She is asking. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Then my I words. I really do have one question. Mm -hmm. I wanted, uh, I wondered if you would, um, explain what the repercussions of unforgiveness how they manifest in a human body in a human psyche yes it is true i did not go into that point i did if i had an hour to speak on the subject of un of forgiveness and unforgiveness there would be many other points that i would cover but it is true that if you are an unforgiving person that is a negative thing and it does become part of who you are. And it will come out through your attitudes. It will come out in your body. Let me explain why. If you do not get rid of unforgiveness or negativity or things of that nature, it becomes part of your physical body. Now it can become part of your physical body in many different ways. And I don't want to even mention all these ways, but I think that you know what I mean. Pain and different kinds of illnesses are a direct reflection of hatred, sorrow, depression, unforgiveness. And if you do not forgive yourself, and some people say, I don't know how to forgive myself. You must look inside and know that there, everyone knows, I believe, if there is something wrong in their life, if they're feeling something is not right in their life. And that is time for an introspection when you cannot put your finger on exactly what is wrong. Go in and find that, do I have a good relationship with all the people around me? Do I have a good relationship with God? Do I have a good relationship with Mother Earth? Do I have a good relationship with myself? 
all these are relationships that you must maintain and and actually it's very easy if you learn how to unconditionally love all things Christ knew how to love all things unconditionally he was even when he was exhausted and tired he let people come and take his energy but God was always there to replenish at the moment that virtue left his body virtue came back in he was an open book he was an open canister for love and forgiveness and healing and you can be too Unless there's anything that we would like to add, I think we're ready to move on. And we really appreciate it. All right, I think that's all that I had to say. Thanks. So I will, I will move on. And I know that you will have more questions later, but perhaps that is the best that you maybe even answer your own questions through your connection with God or through your connections with spirituality. Or even others who might have a spiritual uh, highness that you respect. Much love to you. And I will bring someone else in at this time. Have a good day. Much love. Who but I should follow the great Elijah? Who? <laughs> cool. I am Keck. Excellent. Whoa. Welcome, Keck. <laughs> yes, I find a great interest in following him, for we have great many things in common, but yet we see things from a different perspective, and that is all right. Is there anything out there or any questions that you have for me today? Yes, um, Shira would like to ask a question does. followed by Nibby. Of course, yes. Okay, great. Go ahead, Shira. Hey, Kek, how's it going? I am here and I'm fine. <laughs> well, lately one of uh, my friends named Matan uh, got into the entire chaos magic and uh, this kind of uh, field and he introduced us to you yes and i don't know if you are aware of it but is there is entire theory about your role in the things to come and people actually saw like hieroglyph uh, from egypt showing people and computers and the internet uh, and they speak a lot of, um, how do I put it? Um, well, it is because, let me tell you something. The world is very integrated with, uh, with love, and it's also very integrated with negativity. It's also very integrated with intellectuals who, who, who may look at them things and not know the difference between uh, negativity and positivity they're looking at science and magic they're looking at things from a different perspective they're looking at things not as good and evil necessarily but they're looking at it as the way that it is and the way of the future so now as you are looking at things this way you will find out that uh, there will be a time when they have to put good and evil on it because of the outcome or because of the initial idea of it 
what is your in initial thought process that brings things uh, to you? Is it a positive thought process? Is it a negative thought process? Or is it a mutual, uh, just neutral process? Now, some people think they're being neutral, but they really know that they're being a little negative. And if that is their perspective, that uh, they're doing something very selfish or they're doing something to make themselves gain and heck with everybody else or, or they don't care about anyone else, but it is all about their perspective and what they want to do. And it does not matter if it affects anyone else negatively, then you have to know that that perspective is negative as a whole. Uh, hi, Kek. Uh, this is Nivi, and um, from what I understand, you are a god of uh, destruction for rebuilding. And uh, well, can you speak yeah. about that? Now, you see, when it comes to my thought process, destruction sometimes is not negative. Why? Because what you destroy is negative, not the destruction itself. Grasp that for a moment. If you are destroying negativity from a, a positive way, in a positive way, to bring about positivity eventually, destruction of negativity is that bad. There are many uh, theories on the internet about you communicating with people through the internet, through chat forum, through numbers appearing in uh, 4chan posts. Uh, is that correct? Okay, let me put it this way. I do not tell fortunes. I do not, I am not one that will tell you the future. I'm not one that tells fortunes. And I'm not one that tells you how to live your life. I do, however, give messages now and then when I feel that it is critical or when there are things that need to be said that they are just not getting correctly. Now, some of these people appear to be asking for negative things, but my response is not a negative answer. It is in response to their negativity that I give them suggestions to move positively away from this uh, particular thought process so that they may not involve themselves in a great problem or negativity in the future. Um, did you support the election of Donald Trump in order to destroy the old ways? I did not support him as such. I am not a voter. But I can tell you that the ways of the ways that he is moving will cause destruction. But you must determine if it's positive or negative. I am not one to say where he stands. I am only here to tell you that is he is here to bring about change. Now he can bring about change in positive ways or in negative ways. You decide. He must decide what he is doing as well. Does he feel that he is moving in a negative way? Does he feel like he is moving in a positive way? These are thoughts that you must entertain and figure out by the things that he says and does. I am not here to judge him. Um, I know you were an Egyptian god, um, and you and other another group were worshipped for about a few hundred years, and then were forgotten until recent years. Uh, can you tell me why? We were not forgotten. It was sent underground. It became more of a magic. Uh, they they more talk, talked about me in the realms of magic, which were very small. You see, realms of magic were large at one time on this planet, but then they became, everything became more science oriented and magic became something, oh, magic is not, uh, not something to put any stock in. 
something to just ignore. So that's why we were ignored in many senses and went underground is because the magic that they were talking about, they did not, the world did not believe in anymore. They turned their eyes to science. But remember this, science and magic will overlap and they do all have algorithmic sequences that belong to the universe. You cannot have anything that belongs to the universe that does not have an algorithm or a sequence or a number attached to it because numbers tell the story of all things. So, magic is returning and so that is why I have renewed acceptance. Ah, that's great. Um, one last question. Can you give us a message to our friend that introduced us to you? His name is Matan. Uh, the, the work he does is through uh, chaos magic, which is, which is a modern way of uh, using magic. Yeah, to revive, to revive magic. And they... Only because magic of this time and day and age is slightly different than the magic of the past. It is not conjured exactly the same way. The uh, magic of the ancient past is written in spells and in words you no longer understand. And words that translate uh, uh, do not translate anymore in these languages. Words that are, are no longer part of your language in any way. And so they are, it's a defunct uh, kind of a magic spell. And so it had to be reinvented in this day and age. Okay, thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. Next up is Iwa. She has a question for you. Eva. Hi, oh, Eva. Okay. Sorry, Eva. Uh, it's okay. Uh, hi, Kek. Greetings. I seem to really understand your concept of distractions and not necessary negativity. Uh, but in terms of distraction, I have a question. I have heard, and it seems to be um, more, more people are heard it that. United States military is planning um, electromagnetic pulse yes. drill. Do you know anything about it? Can you give us any information? If it were to actually happen, it would cause worldwide chaos. Are they planning on doing it? Um, absolutely not. It would destroy in a bad way many things and if they did it they would destroy themselves in many aspects they are they did plan it at one time they did plan to do this and then they decided that it was not something that they should do now you understand that that would have been a negative kind of destruction yeah, that would be extreme. I do understand. That's why I feel I need to ask, cannot ignore this. this I would not support that, no. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I actually have a question. I got a message at a Reiki session the other day, and first showed up a leopard, and then a frog, and then countless leopards, countless frogs. And frogs keep popping up for me. Frog medicine, I guess. Um, not really. I've heard that it's excellent for clearing energy fields. I wondered if you could expand on some specifics of. I don't know if that's different from you, frog, or same frog medicine. There is some magic that involves frogs, and they are amphibious, meaning they can go in the water or they can breathe air. And so they are part of the dichotomy of your world. They are they they separate themselves sometimes by the, they separate themselves from the air with the water, and sometimes from the water by the air. So they are, are representatives of uh, lives in two different places. So they represent dimensional travel to some people, and with this. Uh, with this thought process, they also represent healing in, in many ways. 
because they can, uh, you can use water healing, you can use the healing of the hands and the Reiki, which comes through the air. So they are representative of two different kinds of healing, if you want to look at it that way. And you are a person that needs both kinds. And so they are there for you in both representations. Does that have anything to do with being Pisces? Is that why it's necessary or is it just me? I do not think that the sign that you were born under, especially in this planet, has anything to do with your healing. Okay, great. Does anybody in the room have a question? If you could just clarify what was said about what Eva said. Eva said, I, I didn't understand what the... There is supposed to be, all right, she said to clarify what Eva said. Um, was talking about, she was talking about there is was a plan that all electricity would go out, all things would stop, all cars would stop running. There was a certain uh, wave that they could release that would stop all things from working. Okay, thank you. And that would have been very destructive, not only in, th in the United States, but Canada, Mexico, and uh, far off, even to boats and things in the waters, and it could have affected other lands as well. But this is not going to happen at this time. Sheer would like to know what your possible or or uh, origins. What what your origins are? <laughs> Sorry. Like like Ish, and like ones like Ish ascended masters that use negativity in positive ways and positivity to explain negativity. Um, that is the realms which I come from. When I have returned to the Oversoul, if that's what you wish to call it, actually I do not return to Oversoul realms, I'm from a different realm, but um, you call it the Oversoul, so I will as well. And we, we have a different kind of perception about the way God th sees things because, of course, he lets things supernova. Is that destruction? When someone, when a, when a sun supernovas and destroys a solar system, perhaps? Is it, is it destruction when uh, a black hole it sucks in all kinds of materials all around it. Is that destruction uh, negative? It's scientific for sure, but it's not necessarily negative. There is a reason why these natural functions do what they do. And so you may see it as negative, but we see it as the negative form of positivity. Um, Go ahead. I just want to ask you, when you were Kek on Earth, from which uh, race did you came from? And were you, in fact, a frog or just depicted, depicted as one? In the... <laughs> <laughs> um, there is a, a species that is frog-like, and actually your people know them as the LEI, and uh, there is a species that is older than the LEI that I have come from, but uh, the LEI species was born from our species or came from our species. Uh, they are more snail-like looking, but uh, we are more frog-like looking, but we, we do have a resemblance. Can we have the name of the race? The Pishka. Thank you very, very much. And that is from the language that I am from, not what earthlings call it, but I do not want to reveal that at this time. But the Pishka is our name for our own species. And I think it's a very lovely name. It's a royal name. It's an elegant name. 
Are you related to the frog medicine used in shamanic ceremony? The frog what? Frog medicine used in shamanic ceremony, Peruvian. I know about this frog medicine and have practiced it in the past, but find it a little bit irrelevant at this day and age. It is not strong enough for what is necessary for this particular era. What would you suggest as a um, replacement? There are other th stronger things that I will not talk about at this time because you are not ready to understand it or hear it, and you cannot use it. So it would be silly to speak about it. Okay. Are there any more questions in the room or in the chat? I okay. feel that there is a question behind me, but I am not sure what it is. Is there one back there? All right. All right, Keck, thank you so much for joining us. And you are welcome. If there is no other questions, I will take my leave. I think we are complete. Excellent. Much love. Yekowa. <laughs> Greetings, I am Takur. Good morning, Takur. I feel that many are wanting an update on what what the Earth's status are or is. And so I have come to give you a little bit of an update about different things. Uh, first of all, there is more volcanoes and earthquakes still happening at this time than have been perceived for quite a while. This is because of the sun action, the sun uh, disruptions, and it is also because of the axis disruptions and all the other energies. We are trying to keep everything as casual and calm as possible. Excellent. Uh, would you care to answer a couple of questions this morning? Uh, also the weather. Actually, the weather has been slightly better, but it's, th it's still very threatening for the future. Continue. Okay, um, first up would be, Peter has a question. Peter, greetings. Uh, greetings, hello to Kurt, it's an honor to talk to you. Um, I have a couple questions. Uh, first one, what is my vibrational level? Uh, do I have alien DNA? What is the status of my DNA infusions and have I been to the colony? Um, you're at a 4.1. Yes and yes. You have alien DNA within you. As, as most humans do, um, you have been seeded and uh, each person has their own levels of uh, hybridization within them, um, and your level of Pleiadian is rather high. And you have been to the colonies, but the last time you were there was the 10th of October. Okay. And uh, will there be a, like uh, higher involvement of, of myself in the colony? Higher involvement of yourself where? In the colony. I mean, uh, if I, will, will I be involved in, in anything? Like, I don't know, teaching well, or... You will have higher involvement, of course. Higher involvement. You will, be, you, you will be involved in higher involvement, yes. And it will be on this planet in this lifetime. Other than that, I cannot speak to it. It is rather vague. Thank you. Up next is Amanda. Amanda, greetings. Hello, Tucker. You are very soft. Please speak up. Hello, Tucker. Very good. This is the first time I've spoken to you, actually. I must be ready for it finally. Yes. Um, I seem to have many memories 
of once having frequently visited Girk Fichtnir. I just wanted to have that confirmed. Yes, it is true. And what was my role? You were there to learn, but after a while you became a teacher. And um, you learned telepathy and languages. You learned the uh, channeling area. But the place where you were the greatest help was in the healing area. You did uh, learn some healing and some Reiki, galactic Reiki, actually other forms of Reiki other than Earth Reiki, and became a teacher of several, di several different modalities in that area. Did I ever use water as a medium to heal? Yes. Okay. It is yeah. that there are some species that uh, <clears throat> live in water or use water for healing modalities. You learn that different uh, kind of healing modality and actually became an expert at it. Hmm. I'm Pisces and have always had quite the affinity for water, so I wonder if that was true. Absolutely. Um, when I first became aware of you, Takur, you were doing, taking questions on people if they had um, children through the colony or if I have any kind of genetic child. Do you, you want to? Yes, a hybrid child. Yes. You requested one uh, almost a, a year ago, I believe. One moment. Yes, you have a you have a child that is about six months old at this time. Interesting. I assume they visit me. It is a female. Her name is Dewata, and she is Yu Yo. Awesome. Um, well, I don't want to give too much time, but I was very glad to hear that the setter reticula have been healed. Yes. And I do know that I was mostly a willing participant in the genetic donations. Yes. And I remember uh, revoking that permission on my last visit because yes. of the way they treated me. And I very there vividly remember. Some, there has been some what was considered rough treatment by a couple, but they have been relieved of that duty. Yes. And I remember... They actually, let me explain something to you. They mm -hmm. did not really f believe that they were being rough, but humans are much more delicate than some of the species that do some of the work. So in, in their defense, a little bit, they were a little rough, but they were not uh, trying to be, but they have been relieved of that uh, position because they, they are not um, working out. Right. Um the last thing I wanted to clarify was on that very last visit where um, I was with my partner in the room and I had revoked permission for yes. the program because of the fear radiating, radiating off my part, excuse me, my partner. And I remember very clearly the displeasure coming from the Zeta Reticuli and there was a sharp pain in the back where my ovaries were, and I knew they had taken it anyway. And then I was never there again. Betas are not part of our group. Mm, I don't know if it was. We have only reptilians. We do not have any Zeta membership. If there was a Zeta there that you could see, they yes. were not there with permission. I, I gathered that when they took the eggs anyway. I and see. Very sharp pain and awoken me. Uh, we will have to review those tapes and check the energy fields there because they are not welcome in our uh, colonies. And if they were able to get in, we want to know how. Um, well, I have nothing else to clear. I've already forgiven them. But maybe some details to help you with the research where it was very much a small gray. They had a human with them, but it was very much, I hate to use the word zombie, but they were clearly not under their own control. And I think they were there as a comfort interface for the human participants. That I remember would be looking very comforting to me. 
No, but I mean, if you're not thinking about your environment so much. But I remember looking out the window, and it was like moon dust, what we've been conditioned as humans to think the moon lunar surface looks like. And there were footprints left. But the little beings outside, when they noticed me looking, scattered. You must have been in one of the other one of the rare rooms that people usually don't go to because in order to be able to see that you are in one of the very farthest rooms away from the colonies. So we will check into that. Okay. Thank you very much. I think that perhaps they took you there. Could you see anybody else there? Was I there or somebody else there or an image of someone? The only people I remember clearly is the energetic imprint of the partner I was with in my room, the Zeta Gray and the companion, the human companion with him. But the prior to that, I always remember being led through a very medical facility. It was always I'm like, oh, this ward again. I remember this ward. But there were no other distinct energetic impressions from beings. Yes, it sounds like they led you actually out of the colonies hmm. or to the the bar, farthest part of the colonies so that they could uh, do what they wanted to do. Not in the secure areas at all. How they got you out there, I'm not sure. We'll have to look into that. We have had no other reports such as this at all. But perhaps there is and we just do not know about it if they have not come forward. If anyone else has any reports like this, we need to know about it. Thank you very much, Takur. I have nothing else. Yes, we are always watching for security. And it is true that we are one of the ones that are under the greatest attack because we do help humans. And that is not, uh, that is frowned upon by many species. Now, the reason why they think that it is bad is they feel that it is affecting the prime initiative. But we do not see interact. We do not interact with humans on the surface or in any way. So their thoughts about us coming to the planet are wrong. But we do help with permission by your governments, by the way, in helping with weather and with. Uh, several different things that may uh, that are more natural and not man-made at all, not man-controlled. But still, we get much uh, much uh, unhappy people or much unhappy species about this. So they are okay. always trying to infiltrate and make us miserable in the sense but of course we are not going to stop and we are going to continue to strengthen our security all at all times thanks liney has a question liney greetings how are you yeah i'm good thank you uh, can, can you hear me okay yes i can hear you fine yeah. Okay. Um, can I ask you a question? Um, well, I've got just a couple, actually. Um, did did um, someone get married this week in, when I was in Dream State? I believe that someone did, yes. Yeah, okay. Is it the person I think it is? I believe it is, but I, I know that you do not want to, uh, to okay. say anything, so that is yeah. fine. All right. Um, and also, where was I last night? Because it was quite interesting. I was holding a skull at one point. Um, yeah, a very powerful one, actually, yes. Yeah, it's really interesting. Um, can you tell me anything about that last night, where I was or anything? Actually, you were visiting um, Maya last night, and you were holding uh, one of the crystal skulls from their planet. Not from the earthly crystal skull collections, but from the uh, Pleiadian crystal skull collection. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting. It's um, yeah, it was kind of um, was that was it like a brown color and it's kind of yes. shiny. Yes. Um, yeah. Ah, 
really interesting. Does that does that have, does that have any significance to, to anything? Well, yes, on there Earth was a get together or? with some ladies last night. Um, not not all their usual group. They but they did want to meet with a couple because there were some things that were uh, needed to be told to you in the astral about uh, the different things that are happening on Era and Polana. Okay, and, and what was that ring? Uh, I saw like um, there was like a ring. It had like a, a black oval, like gemstone or something on it. Do you know anything? I, I think it belonged to somebody. Yes, it did. It was it. Yeah. Uh, it belonged to one of the John Dyke Council members. Oh right! Oh, very interesting. Okay, thank you so much, Taka. You're welcome. Thank you. Up next is Eva. Um, hi, Tekar. Um, I have a very Deborah, important. I have a very important question uh, regarding my family. Um, as you know, I have a daughter, Chloe, who yes. is very young, but she just woke up during the workshop, which you also participated as a teacher. Thank you so much. Um, because she woke up, it causes her really enormous difficulties in school and at this time she is basically not able to attend school which of course um I, you know um is very hard on me and i'm trying to my i'm trying my best to help and figure it out also because of all of this i have to suddenly deal with her father who is a negative being I have not learned to deal with, honestly speaking. So my question is if if there is a possibility to send us some healing as well as advice. Chloe well, is thinking that maybe the um, MET, MET school would be a resolution, different school, but I do not know how to make it possible for her to go it very quickly. I understand. I am telling you this, and it is uh, many of the reasons she cannot integrate into the school is because she is afraid of the reaction that she will get. She must eventually fit into the world as herself, and she must be herself. And if this is a problem, then her awakening needs to go farther. She has to awaken to the fact that being herself is not the not the problem, and not it, it. And she's going to have to face the world again. I know children can be very cruel, and that is what she's finding. That when she is herself, they're negative and cruel, and they reflect the thoughts of their parents in a much uh, more negative way than their parents would even reflect them. And he cannot handle this kind of activity. However, as she is waking up, she has to realize that her mission will be in the world and they, that she will have to fit in there. And she must be confident and move forward. I know this is frightening for her. And, and, and I will send healing and we will send an infusion for her for uh, some courage and things of that nature and some strength for you as well because you are dealing with all of these things so um, but we see what is happening there and it is great fear that keeps her away from the school because she's afraid to be persecuted so we will work on that with you thank you so much can you also give me any feedback of dealing with her father because her I really father is a person of negative uh, energy he has a great deal of negative energy and he has free will so he will say what he says but I I do not think you will have to deal with him constantly but he is he is going to try to take her away and force her into school but it will not work yeah is there do you see any possibility that maybe um the 
other school Chloe is talking about, which now, if she finds that one school is like another, except for those that for exceptional students or those for troubled students, she's going to find all other schools are very similar. Okay, even the one because it's this one. She started complaining also of not being able to follow the um, Common Core curriculum, which she I do. Get back in that her thought processes are advanced. She's very bright, but she needs to uh, understand that she is living in the third dimension, and she must accept that. I see that she is awakened. Her fourth dimensional energy is strong, and she has lots of questions about that. But she has to come back to the third dimension and ground. And this is something she needs to do now. Okay. Thank you so much. And please heal as much as possible. We love both of you, and we'll do as much as we can. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, thank you, Tikar. I think that's, unless anyone in the room has a question, we are finished. Oh, unless you would like to give us a date for the next governmental meeting. That has been postponed indefinitely because of, of Trump and because of threats of war. Everyone does not feel comfortable having a meeting at this time. Good call. And so this will be the first year in many years that there will only be two meetings and not three. The, the next one is not slated until probably March of next year, and that is quite a delay. So we are a little unhappy about that, but it is what it is, and we will deal with it accordingly. But we do want to see that things move forward on your planet in a positive and peaceful way so we will we do agree with them that it is a, a very difficult time and we do understand the reasoning behind the postponement but it is indefinite and there are rumors of march but that could be also not true i see thank you for visiting you are welcome. Much love. Have a wonderful day, and I will be on my way. Namaste, and much love to all of you. Thanks, Jika. I do not know who is out here, but someone will come, I am sure. Uh. Grindle sends his apologies. He cannot make it today, but he wanted to be here. But he is not coming. I am Tote. Thank you for being here, Tote. Um, there is someone in the room. Did you have a did you want to give us a message first before we ask questions? Well, I do want to say that some of your people ask for the opening of the Akashic records quite frequently, and it is not a possibility for everyone. The reason for this is some of you may not know your futures or pasts, 
at this moment because you are going through lessons that must be learned that must be learned and it, knowing these extra informations would change the way that the outcome of your lesson would be so therefore we cannot always accommodate everyone from your planet and there is a procedure that must be taken place for some of you especially if it is an important matter there is much bureaucracy in the sense that you cannot just get to your information or you cannot just get there to the things you need to know there must be safety nets and precautions taken so that the information is given to the right person at the right time and that has to be identified and it has to be approved now along with other things in your culture i'm sure you understand these kinds of bureaucracies and uh, steps to secure you and your projects but at this point i am here to just answer questions and make sure that everyone understands the akashic records and the other things that i work with well prior to doing that why don't would you please um expand on the things you're related to i mean what are your kind of your specialties or I mean, like the Emerald Tablets and whatever else that are, is your major skill sets or mm -hmm. what you're related to. There are so many different writings about what I'm supposed to be involved with the Emerald Tablets and the Akashic Records and such the like. Um, there are many things written down, and I do not know what they all are. But I have had my um, connections with the Egyptian cultures as well. And there are many things there that I am associated with and the Atlantean cultures. But Tote, my, my being, is now more in charge of Akashic systems and records and making sure that the that it is done properly and that the correct informations are given now being that there are millions of those that work on the akashic records daily it is a large job it's like running a, a very large country and you must check in constantly to make sure that everyone is doing what they need to do and so that is my present concern and is the one that is most relevant to me at the moment. Excellent. The things of the past are the things of the past. If you would like to know what I was involved in, or you would like to read about that, that's fine. There is materials. But what I am doing now is of great importance. And I find that I have spent a lot of energy keeping things appropriate. I see. Peter has a question he'd like to ask you. Yes. Uh, hello, Tov. Um, a few years back, I have been like strongly drawn to, to you, and I read a lot about you, and uh, in my meditation, I tried to a blend with your energy and um, I just wanted to know why was that you relate to me because you have been one that has entered the Akashic records more than once for information not only in this life but in several others so we are acquainted in some ways and our energies have become friendly with one another thank you So I'm going to ask my question next. Um, I've been 
I my veil is not thin, <laughs> very three D. <laughs> but a lot of people will tap into my energy, and they will mention something with regard to the, with regard to you that I am connected to you, and something about the emerald tablets. And I would just like to hear from you what our connection is. Yes, we have been in many lives together, and the emerald tablets are part of that. But you. <clears throat> right now, you need to come to an understanding who you are in this life in order to understand who you were in the past. Uh, there has been many things that have come and stood in your way in this life to stop you from reaching your goals and your uh, ultimate powers in this life. And so I would need you to first understand that this life is a reflection of the, some of those past lives but only in a more powerful way in some respects. And once you realize that, then we can talk about the Emerald Tablets and other things that you are connected to in the past. But right now, I want you to connect to the present because right now, you are, you are starting to make that veil a little thinner. You are starting to make it, even though you don't see that, I know, but you are starting to make the veil thinner because why you're taking actions that you believe are necessary and they are and you will do these actions and they will prove that you are correct in your assumptions <laughs> so it's interesting that you said i needed to know myself first to understand me in the past and usually it's expressed the other way around you need to know your history before you can understand your now um, <laughs> It is different for so, you because of the many things that you have come up against in this life, energies that would keep you subdued. And usually in this life, when people are looking to the past, they have already reached a certain level of their full experience, whereas that is not quite the case with you. I see. So my focus should be on action, action, more action, action. Correct, because the actions will speak to you <laughs> and bring to you uh, some solutions. Um, um, is there anything, is there anything else, else you have, have me know, me know on, this on this wild ride? Even now they try to block your words from me. It came through very uh, distorted. But I, yes, I can tell you the answer to that. And it is that uh, you have been on a wild ride, but at this time you see, you've looked back and saw some of the, the reasons for this. And uh, you have energies around you, such as your daughter, that will help you to rise as well. When she sees that your path is clear, she will actually make it even clearer. Excellent. Beautiful. Um, up next is Sheer. Sheer. Hello, Thoth. How it's are you? Good. Um, actually, the first time that I had an interaction with you was quite interesting because I was trying to channel and I channeled you when I want to speak with Ryan Anubis. Now I know that I can't know about my connection to Anubis. Radhi told me about my connection with him and I sense that there's a connection between you and I and if you could collaborate if it's possible and uh, elaborate. Elaborate. I see. Are, there you have connections with many of those that are mentioned throughout the histories of the universe. There are many fa names and uh, faces that you are acquainted with if you were to see them and to understand them. I am just one of them. I have actually helped you with one of your missions, but that was 800, 1,000 years ago, something like that in, year, in your years. And it was successful. But you are always calling on those around you for 
your strength and you do have a great deal of strength on your own but the missions that you take on need extraordinary guidance and implicit uh, uh, movement so therefore we know we've known each other from past missions great and just out of curiosity yeah, it's hard to pronounce it. Is there any chance that you are a creative being by any chance? Yes. Okay, that tells me what I needed to know. <laughs> Thank very you very much. Cool. But I am not on your planet at this time. I am not a creator being that is involved in your ascension. That's okay. Are you from a Ra click, Ra and Osiris click? I am from somewhere beyond that. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. you uh, Eva is next, please. Um, hi, Toth. Somehow I don't see you, but okay. Um, I know that I had quite spectacular life in ancient Egypt, so I assume that um, I had some connections with you back then but this lifetime seems like a great challenge so uh, i have a actually kind of general question because it seems to be that a lot of light workers um have challenging time right now some suffer physically some suffer emotionally but it seems like it's not easy. And I know that my, some of my, I don't know all my past lives, but I know that at least the Egyptian one was quite amazing. Um, so how can we help ourselves as light workers to, to, to just do our work? Because it seems like that when we are in pain physical or emotional because it's you know it's different for different people we we don't do what we are supposed to do here okay. well you have to realize that when you have these kinds of lives that are greatly difficult that means that there is something that uh many negatives are trying to keep you from doing they do not want you to succeed they want you to fail they want you to not reach your goal and so you must realize that and look at the things that are keeping you back look at those things and in your case it would probably be uh fear and uh, not understanding the situation completely so we will work on you with that but the thing is when these people are having so much difficulty in their lives if they are having difficulty moving forward it's because they're trying they're being stopped there are negativities that do not want you to succeed there are negativities that do not want you to move forward and get your mission done so that is something you must pray about and look and see what they're putting in your way what are those things that are stopping you from moving forward Look at them, and those are the things that you need to pray about. And if you know what they are, if you have realized what they are in this dimension, then you can deal with them and get rid of them in some way. And if you can't do it alone, bring in the most powerful people that you know to help you to relieve that. Of course, they have to believe in your cause to move forward, but I believe that there are others around you that will be very helpful. Are there any techniques or how do I protect myself from these beings? Because sometimes I actually hear my thoughts and I ask myself, okay, those are not really my thoughts. Who is thinking that? Correct. You must actually go into meditation. I, I know that some people are finding it difficult to get into meditation because meditation, some people look 
uh, or feel like they cannot get into a deep meditation. But meditation is very important for expanding your thought processes about what is in the real world. Your fourth dimensional abilities in your meditation will bring information from other places that will help you. Now, if you cannot meditate or do not have time, then you must be in a constant state of speaking to God in some way, speaking to your spirit's guides in some way, so that they can understand that you are looking for what you are looking for exactly and what you're going through. Because many times the spirit does not know what the flesh is feeling. Do you understand that? Yeah, yeah. And so definitely you must verbalize everything that you're going through. And I think you're doing a better job of that these days, of verbalizing the things that are, are wrong. So you need uh, uh, to bring positivity onto those things. Thank God that you're going through it. And thank God that he will bring you out of it. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Toth, there's a, a debate on the side chat. Um, I know you're depicted in Egyptian times as an ibis bird creature. <laughs> I don't know. And um, some would like to speculate that you were related to blue avians. Is that true or false? There is a relationship, but I was a shift changer. I was a shape changer, and I mm -hmm. could look in different ways mm -hmm. on the earth, uh, but only a couple of different ways. I could not change a lot, but there was a couple of different uh, personas I could take on. So, so yes, I knew who the blue avians were, and that was one of the things I could look like a little. Actually, I couldn't look exactly like them. But mm -hmm. I could look somewhat like them. So what is your primary? I mean, when when one is a shapeshifter, does one have a primary being? A pr primary form, or... yes. And, and so what is it, your, what what was yours at that time? My primary form on the earth was human because I tried to uh, I tried to stay as a human looking individual most of the time, but I did have the bird persona, and I did have a lion persona. And where did, at that time, what would your race be where you came from, as I it were? Creed, I was a creator, I did not have a, a race. I see. Okay, I think that answers. All right, very well. The question done out here and we are very advanced i i feel that people are wanting to know about science and things of that nature. you are exactly correct alex is very interested in the science domain <laughs> there is a great science domain that is happening on your world at this time but i cannot bring it out they will have to bring it out um but I am interested in it because it is far more advanced than you can possibly imagine. And I do not know where they've gotten all of their technologies, but it is interesting that they are so far advanced. They can even, uh, they ha have even some technology that reaches into fifth dimensional understanding. So that is amazing to me at this point. Cool. I have a question, if I may. Yes, Very please. well. To care, it's Marlene speaking. How are you? I am not to care. This is Toth. Oh, Toth. Okay. Um, the, the question is concerning uh, the uh, nuclear testing of North Korea. Yes. In their um, unfinished tunnel, and yes. there's a lot of uh, cloud of uh, there's a cloud of radiation that spread across the hemisphere. Yes, and the mountain uh, on top of their testing uh, site 
uh, may be on the verge of collapsing, and it created a 6.3 magnitude earthquake and a landslide. Yes. Uh, can you give us precision on this, please? Precision? Concerning uh, the, the impact. On oh, the I see. You want to know what the impact will precisely be? Exact. Well, it, you've already seen some of it, but it will continue to affect the Earth in smaller ways now. When it first occurred, then you saw the immediate effects, which were strong. Now, the half-life of radiation, there are different kinds of radiations and different half-lives. If you know, understand radiation, you mm -hmm. know that it has a half-life. The half-life of this radiation is probably 17,000 years. Um, that's a long time. And that means this radiation will be around for a while, and it will affect things on your planet. But... There is other radiations in your atmosphere that may help to uh, break it down and or they may fight against one another in some ways, but usually radiation doesn't do that. They just sort of mingle one with another. But we will see there's different kinds of science that you talk about right there. And so we will have to see how it interacts with other things. And it is already starting to do so. But it will cause another earthquake in that area. And it will also cause um, some damage to the ozone is already very damaged. But this will cause uh, damage to the ionosphere. Thank you. Um, concerning the mountain, if I can come back to the, uh, the Mount Montap. Yes. Uh, how is it affected uh, at this point with all the nuclear testing? It is, it is a radioactive at this time, and no one lives on it at all. No one can live there. Uh, they have moved everyone off, or the people that were there have felt the effects and, and moved away because they were very ill. Several died, actually. Yes. Many hundreds of people died, yes. Yes. Of course. Okay, thank you so much for your information. You're welcome. Are there any questions from the room? No. Okay. And it has been a good time with you, but I think that it is time to call it a day. Excellent. Unless there's more questions, of course. But I do not think so. I think you're correct. Very well. Thank you for being here. And then we will go. Ah, I see. Much love to you. That is what they say in this world. <laughs> I've been instructed to say that. It's not something that I would normally say. What would you normally say? I would say goodbye. <laughs> oh. Excellent. I think that works also. <laughs> yes. So have a good day. And I am cheerfully leaving as and being very kind and nice as I go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'll try to be kind and nice as I go as well. <laughs> Excellent. I think that... Politeness is overdone here, but that is all right. <laughs> uh, Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Hello. Hello. It is Welcome Jim. back, Jim. Hi. How Jim, are you doing? I'm doing great. I was wondering if you could channel yourself now. <laughs> yes, I'm channeling myself at the moment. Oh, you know what? I'm blank. <laughs> <laughs> uh.
Hux. Okay. I don't know <laughs> what myself was thinking. So. <laughs> so. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I, I think we should uh, leave with a few prayers. Mm -hmm. If somebody in the room wants to do a prayer, if somebody out there wants to do a prayer, that would be really cool. All Can right. Uh, Barbara? Barbara, we'll do one. Please uh, type in the side chat if you are interested in doing a blessing. I will do one Anybody? as well. Yes, okay. I'm pulling one in here. Will is also going to do one. Anybody out there? I'll do one. All right. There we got three. Barbara will be first. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, very good. Thank you, Lord, for the energies today and for the information. We ask that it go straight to the heart and straight to the mind and let there be much um, uh, awareness around all these things. Thank you, God, and be with us always. All right. Well, Will? Yes. <laughs> Will is coming. Hello, Will. Hello. It's going on Sam. Tita kata ta kasa nana achchika wu to shua. Shishikawa ya nana na hi sisi hiya. Awa shishakawa ta kaya ta skana ni hi sisi achchikaya. To husa no 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 shia ya. Naya ka husa sawaya. Life of all kinds is a treasure. Believe that you are moving forward to find that which is for you. There are great rewards at the end of life, and many even before the end. And so find yourself and find all the things that are for you. Let the life that you are living be one of joy and understanding, helpfulness, love, and greatness. We see that there are many of you that are already on wonderful paths. Continue in your own thought process with the help of God. That's interesting. Wow, interesting one, yeah. Those were Jamie's peeps. They were what? They were Jamie's peeps. Oh, Jamie's peeps. I heard them talking, so I you got them brought them. <laughs> Excellent. Go ahead. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Remember, my children, that even when you have achieved your goal, there are other goals still out there. Even when you have come to the end of ascension for this portion of your life, there is more ascension afterwards. You continue to rise until you find the face of God, and it will be 
a satisfying journey. You continue to rise even beyond what you know because God continues to create and become greater. So you will never ever know all that it is He and all that He has done. But you will always be striving to know Him in a greater way and in a way that makes you more joyful, more loving, more understanding, more wise, and more like Him. Wow, okie doke. Alrighty then. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Jim. Oh, before you go, we'll do our announcements one more time. Remember the workshop coming up in February in Sedona from February 1st to 6th. I'm really uh, looking for, there's, there's more people out there that are going to come. Right now, we, I think we have nine. So we still have a ways to go to fill that up. But um, I think that they are, some of those people already know who they are because I've heard from some of them that say, as soon as I get the money, I'm signing up. So that would be great. And also we have the Galactic Reiki class, November 25th and 26th from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. And we have several people signed up for that. I also may be having a second Galactic Reiki class because people on the other side of the world in Japan and Australia have expressed some interest in that, but the time slot puts them at four in the morning or five in the morning, and that's really not acceptable for them. So I'd have to do an evening workshop for them, but I'd have to get a little more interest. Well, two is, I have two over there, that side of the world. So if there's uh, more than two, please let me know. And if there's four or five, we can actually set up a class for that. So thank you very much. Thank you. Much love, everybody. Have a great day. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank Love you, you so much. Bye-bye. Love you too. Love you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Peace out. Hello. Can anyone hear me? I just want to check and see if I have feedback on my line. Check, check, one, two, three, checking audio levels. Okay, it's good, it's good.